Okay, I don't know how terrible that will be. You're gonna have to edit it heavily. What's your minimum specification? You're joining me here at Intel's event in Israel. I'm joined by Paul, and today we're probing Paul about processors. Excellent. Well, shucks, the cloud is here, but which cloud do you trust? Manage your infrastructure with Linode, the biggest independent cloud services provider. Linode offers double the database performance per dollar than the big four, and now enhances it further with new NVMe-backed block storage. Spin up a game server, website, personal VPN, or something more bespoke today with a free $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash techdeppotato. So, Paul, you've been here. Have you liked what you've seen? I am pretty impressed. I'm surprised. We've known that for a while that a Raptor Lake would get up to 5.8 gigahertz. Today, Intel said it'll hit six gigahertz. Um, that's what we could talk about right now, of course. So Intel has said six gigahertz, of course, that's probably gonna be like a KS model, but it is pretty interesting. It'll be the first six gigahertz uh, consumer CPU. It's, we're getting slowly close to that 10 gigahertz CPU slowly. Intel promised. Yes, I think they're about 10 minutes late to 10, or 10 hours late. To 10 gigahertz. 10 years late. Yes. To, 10 gigahertz. I think, I think 20 years almost now, right? Yes, correct. So this isn't Pentium 5, this is Raptor Lake 13th Gen. 13900K would be the typical name for this sort of part for i9. Yep. Um, Intel has an event in a couple of weeks called Innovation, which we'll both be at, where we expect to hear more about these processes. Today, they've only given us the littlest taste. We've got, we've seen some comparative benchmarks. That's correct. We've, um, information on chipset core. We've got some overclocking records. That's right. They did disclose today that they've set a, some sort of overclocking record at eight gigahertz. We're not sure if that's the over, you know, the overall frequency record uh, for all chips, but they are disclosing that they have set a world record, which is pretty surprising. Of course, it's yeah. going to be under liquid nitrogen and how useful that is <laughs> to us normal folks is probably debatable, but it does yeah. show that the chips can clock. And, yeah. you know, there's some headroom. So, so that, that, that's slow bit advice. She's in charge of all this. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> but eight gigahertz, I'm not sure if that's single core, all core, loaded workload. We have no idea. Does it, is that even with multi-threading enabled? You know, a lot of times yeah. when they're going for these all-out world record frequencies, they're running it on a single core and they're turning off multi-threading. So Again, how useful is that to you or I? I don't know, but it does speak <laughs> volumes about the health of the process. 10 nanometer, we're going to the next generation of 10 nanometer. We should expect- oh, Intel uh, 7. It, yes, and <laughs> the correct, the, the new name is Intel 7. So this is the second generation of that process, um, at least a newer step, if we yeah. can imagine. Yeah. And that should deliver some, some pretty good gains. You know, Typically, you'll see higher clocks and lower voltages, lower power consumption on a like for like basis. Yeah. That doesn't mean you'll get lower power consumption from the chips in the end. <laughs> I mean, we're now in this area where 250 watts for the main high-end i9, Ryzen 9, it seems to be the norm, right? That's right, that's right. So AMD is also kind of popping the cork on power. Um, that's gonna keep them competitive. A AMD should not be underestimated. Right now, the peak clock speed, if I recall correctly for them, is 5.7 gigahertz. But that's on a shipping 16 core model. Yeah. That's a mainstream model now with the six gigahertz for the Intel Pretty sure it's probably going to be a very expensive KS model that won't ship in a whole lot of volume. So we'll have to see. I think the frequency between the two will be much closer when we're looking at like a 12900 KS against yep. AMD's best processor. Or oh, 13, 13, 13 900 KS. So you have yes, to get used yes. to saying 13. Yes. Um, yeah, these namings, they've they got to change. <laughs> they do have to change. It's getting longer every every time. So. It's uh, are you. So you're with Tom's Hardware. If you don't know Paul, go 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 see his work at Tom's Hardware. Um, are you still guys still working with uh, Alan Splave? We are still working with Alan, and you know he is the number one ranked overclocker in the world, and he does write a lot of articles for us. Uh, we I would imagine that you'll see some stuff coming out <laughs> around Raptor Lake. I may even know the results, but I can't tell you yet. So. <laughs> he doesn't know the results. Uh, ish, ish, <laughs> ish, ish. ish. So, I mean, of course, they're going to continue refining the platform yep. as we get closer to actual reviews. We're looking at, you know, this is a little bit further out on the timeline. Ra you know, Ryzen 7000 will be here before Raptor Lake. 
by yep. probably about a I don't know a few weeks a month we don't know for sure but it's yeah Rap, be Rap, a while. Raps Lake's meant to be coming this year yes uh, fingers Expected crossed in October yeah the 700 series motherboards I mean there's a few right behind the camera we can't show you any of them um, but they're getting heavier we can tell you that <laughs> we but, either we're getting heavier or you need to work out yeah uh, I don't know I need to work out more at least anyway. So thanks, Paul, for coming on the channel yep. to talk about Raptor Lake. Ready, ready, ready to review? Yes, there's going to be some long nights, especially right after I get off the plane from this event. Yeah, but I'll see you in Innovation in a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, we'll be there too. Awesome. Thanks, thanks everyone for watching. Take care.